Hey guys, welcome back to part number three on the McLaren 650S rebuild project. So far, it's been a pleasure working on this thing. <laughs> I wish I could say that without laughing. Last video, we did breathe a huge sigh of relief. This thing actually did start up on its own and ran perfectly fine. That is with the old oil that was in it. I just needed to verify that it actually would run before I dumped a bunch of money into this thing. And because we heard it run, last video you guys saw, I did dump $10,000 into some cosmetic parts. So everything that I need that's gonna take about a month or so to get here. But today we actually have to pull some of the high hydraulic lines off. I need to replace the steering rack and at that point it will be running and driving. And once I pull those hydraulic lines off, I can grab the part numbers for those because some of them are kinked. One of them is completely broken. And today we're going to do some pulling and just bending stuff backwards. We verified that whoever owned this last wrapped it around a light pole. Uh, just But because it was such a pinpoint impact, there wasn't a whole lot that was damaged. Here you guys could see there's a obviously just a junkyard impact bar that they slapped on here and actually welded in. So I need to physically take a grinder and cut this thing off. You guys can see the OEM impact rail was obviously torn in the crash. So a light pole went straight through the middle here and created this, uh, this little divot here. But luckily the light pole damage was actually probably one of the more ideal damages you'd want on a front end car. There's a lot of other YouTubers picking up McLarens right now that had the whole front end just completely ripped off. Um, wheels were everywhere, suspension was messed up, but luckily this was pretty isolated in the damage it did. But I think it's pretty jacked up. They just weld in a junkyard impact bar just to make it look like it hadn't been wrecked through the impact bar. <laughs> but anyway, all that to say, today we're gonna be taking out the battery and just getting to this damage back here, pulling everything out that needs to be pulled out. The brakes actually work as they're intended to work. The brake pump down here seems to function just fine. And maybe you guys can see back there the steering rack that is also bent. There's a little bit of feedback on the steering still, and it does to a degree still kind of function. But today we need to replace that. So let's just get straight to work. That's enough talk, not enough action. Let's just get to it. All right. One thing I'm not a huge fan about McLaren is they have different bolts for literally everything. This one small bracket has three bolts on it. One of them's a 10, two of them are eights. Why? Ah, oh, frick. Gosh dang. I'm gonna go ahead and just bend this back. Luckily, they were lazy enough to where they only welded this side and this side. I don't even think they welded. Yeah, they didn't weld the bottom at all. So I cut these two things, it'll come right off. I started with the handy dandy cordless grinder. It was a cute attempt, but had almost zero effect on it. So I busted out the corded grinder that's more powerful, again, with almost no effect whatsoever. This metal is thicker and harder than it looked. So I whipped out the Sawzall with metal cutting blade and went to absolute town on it. Wow. Whew. Take a rest for a second. Oh yeah, let's go, let's freaking go, dude. That hurt, but that was nice at the same time. Shows how good their welds were. Wow, solid welds, bro. Definitely not great welds. Anyway, take a look at this beautiful damage we get to remove now. Maybe I'm too much of an optimist, but this extent of damage doesn't really look that bad to me. Most people see, you know, broken and bent parts, but I see that most of the connectors are still here. I know where things are supposed to go. The structure is still there. You know, nothing's damaged that we can't just swap out for new stuff. At least that's a hope at this point, as I begin working and assessing the deeper damage. I heard someone say today that many people don't fulfill their potential because they are so focused on the pain and the challenge rather than the glory that comes through it. I think that's how I see project cars before I even begin fixing them. Look at that. Wow. There's one wire that's kind of kinked, but it might just be still working. That's crazy. That'll be fun to re-solder all those wires. This is the point where I realized that McLarens have no real logic about how to take things off. It's all just intertwined parts that you really can't just remove individually piece by piece. To disassemble one thing, you need to disassemble another thing halfway to get to the bolts you need. So during this section, you'll see me jumping around to different tasks as I figure out how to attack this McLaren puzzle. I 
I'm very close to getting this frame rail off. You guys can see it's completely loose and ready to pull out. But guess what? There's one bolt way down here that you guys can see can't unscrew because of the subframe that's on it. <laughs> Great design there. So I need to remove the whole subframe to get that one screw out. But I do need to replace the subframe. I was on the fence whether I'd replace this one or not because whoever was flipping this swapped a generic subframe in there and it's functional enough to where I could make it work. And I figured it was 1,600 less to spend on the project. However, I was searching around on eBay last night and there was one for $1,400 with free shipping. Slight, you know, scrapes on it. Obviously somebody went over something and it was scratched a little bit underneath, but I offered him 950 because you can do offers on eBay now. And he came back at 1100. So I went ahead and just bought it for 1100. That was $300 off of the asking price. So $1,100 for a brand new subframe. I think the benefits of spending $1,100 on a new subframe will be well worth it in the end. I want this thing as OEM and as good condition as possible. The thing is, is it's just a budget build. Like <laughs> there's really not any way around that. It's a high mileage McLaren 650S. So I was trying to just cut costs at this point, but at $1,100, I don't think I'll find one cheaper than that. So I went ahead and just pulled the trigger. I want the car to look nice. I really do. It's a cool car. It's just, I'm trying to keep costs down as well. Anyway, there you guys go. I do have in fact a subframe coming for this thing. We are swapping this one out, even though it is functional, but they haven't shipped it. I bought it yesterday and it hasn't shipped yet. So it's gonna at least be a few days waiting on that. But at least in the meantime, I can put jacks under the car, just lift it up, take the subframe out. I have a lot of the hydraulic hoses already in, but I'm sure I'm gonna need a couple more. I just don't have part numbers for those ones yet until I take it off. Oh, what the freak? I just broke my freaking tool. Wow. That's hilarious. That's freaking crazy. This was the only adapter I had. So I can't take the wheels off until I get an adapter. Honestly, taking the wheel off will only give me another six inches of room to get like wrenches in there. I think I can do it easily without taking it off. So I'm just gonna get to it. Just started raining again. <sighs> this is real fun. This, this is a great time. And of course, right after I said that, the rain began steadily increasing. So I went for an easier task of stripping down the passenger side frame rail instead, so I could stop halfway through if needed. And indeed I did. It would be nice to have this thing in the garage to work on. That way it's out of the elements and everything and I can work on it around the clock if I wanted to. But where's the fun in that? I'm just grateful to have a space for the car at all. You guys may remember our last house with the one car driveway and no garage. I'm thrilled just to be able to fit this car at my house at all. All right, well, good timing. I literally just pulled up as FedEx was coming up here. This looks like a subframe to me, but that's crazy because it was literally yesterday that I was telling you guys it hadn't shipped yet. I was not expecting it today. BMA European Auto Parts, well done. Gave me a good deal and shipped it out like two day shipping. Freaking legit. There it is. A little bit dirtier than the pictures, but whatever. Upon further inspection, this is kind of a strange dilemma. Like it came really fast, I got a good deal on it, but this is definitely not the one that was in the pictures on their eBay listing. The one I ordered on the eBay listing had scratches, pretty deep scratches across the bottom here. There's nothing here. The one I ordered also had the battery box in it to hold the battery in and obviously it's not there, so. I guess it's kind of a trade-off. I would have liked the battery box to have been on it, but I also wasn't a big fan of the big scratches across the bottom. I don't really know what to make of it. I'm just gonna make it work. The plan in my head was relying on a battery box being there for the finished product, but <laughs> we'll have to figure that out now. But the structure of this one is in better condition than the photos. I also noticed the, the sensors that are supposed to be here from the photos are also not there. I'll reach out and see what the deal is, but I mean, overall we have a subframe. That's all I really was buying it for. I purchased the specific one I did because of the sensors on here, but it is what it is. I'm not gonna complain. It was a decent deal. So at least we have a subframe. Let's get it on the car. The thing that required a signature right now was the paperwork. I'm excited. We own the McLaren boys. We officially own the McLaren. <laughs> we can work on it knowing that we can actually get it on the road. How about that? Starting teardown again, it was now time to disconnect the hydraulic coolant and brake lines. I'm not gonna say I was scared, but like the hydraulic lines are pressurized, so I didn't know if I was gonna get absolutely hosed with fluid or not at any moment. <laughs> the risk of that kept the whole thing spicy, if nothing else. But luckily the system didn't have pressure because a couple of the lines were broken, so progress sped up a little bit in that regard. At 
this point, I really had no idea where to start. It was all still really new to me. You'd assume you just start with the components that are most visible and prominent, but on those parts, a lot of bolts are hidden behind other deeper parts, or I need to remove hydraulic or coolant lines attached to them before being able to remove it, and a lot of those lines are damaged and really difficult to access the connections for them. It was just a big puzzle. According to eBay, this is the body kit I ordered. <laughs> like the whole fenders and bumper and everything. So we'll see what it actually is. Not what I was expecting, but I, d I need these before I can actually put the bumper on anyway. Very nice. I wonder if the radiators will fit in this, but this is exactly what we need. This right here is for the passenger side, looks like. No, this is for the driver's side. I hope the radiators I have will actually fit in this. That's uh, very much to be determined. I don't, I don't think it will. Yeah, if nothing else, I'll make it work. That's all we need. So I'm talking about. These are so hard to find online. It was like, I think it was like $420 shipped new for both these. So as long as they fit the car, that's all I'm worried about. They look decent enough for me. They're not like the greatest quality, but all they have to do is funnel air. So as long as there's a duct behind the actual grate on the bumper, that's all it needs. It'll look OEM. So here we go. All right, you guys. So coming inside the car, I guess is the only way to get this steering pump out of there. Apparently there's a couple screws underneath the footwell here that go through the firewall. And so I'm in the footwell trying to get this thing out. There's a lot of radar detector stuff. I'm trying to get this bracket out right now. There's a lot of radar detector stuff to take out. So anyway, wish me luck. Now I take a deep dive into the footwell of the car, quite literally, <laughs> to get the steering pump removed. If you've ever had to contort yourself to work under the dash of a car, you probably know how aggravating it can be. There were definitely lots of bad language words uttered throughout the course of this event. This is so ridiculous. What else is freaking, con are you serious? There's one on top too? Are you serious? There's another one? and for good reason. Just to hold this bracket in, McLaren decided to assort seven millimeter, eight millimeter Allen head screws and a variety of impossible to reach clips just to make things as hard as humanly possible to turn a 15 minute DIY job into a six hour of build labor time job at McLaren dealership. <laughs> But in the end, I got all the radar detector stuff and the bracket out so I could access the screws to unbolt the steering rack through the firewall. Well, I didn't even find any screws under there. I think somebody had already taken them out because it's loose. I don't know if I had tried yanking on it previously, but it's definitely loose. I just need like two more eight millimeter screws to take out but I didn't find any bolts or nuts to take out. So I think somebody else has already been in here trying to do this. I do remember the steering pump was a recall item for the early 12 C's and 650 S's apparently. So maybe it was done at the dealership and they just didn't put the screws back in. Freak. Wow. Look, we got it. This project holds a lot of firsts for me, which is pretty cool. To be 100% honest, I had no idea what this pancake thing was since I've never needed to replace one before. I assumed it was a steering component, but in fact, this was the brake booster, the part that takes the direct braking input from the brake pedal, it's actually connected. I didn't know anything about it or how to remove it, but found out that this was removed from inside the cabin. You have to disconnect the linkage from the brake pedal and remove three screws holding it into the firewall. And at that point, it slides out from the front. It's the first time removing a brake booster from the front of the car. Uh, this linkage here to the brake pedal, and then there's three bolts here, and then it should come off from the front. It's really tight working in here, but that's just the name of the game right there. So let's just get to freaking work. Some kind of a little clip here. Wow, that was the easiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Wow. I don't suppose it'll be easy getting this off. There is no way this is coming out this easy. What the freak? Wow. That was the easiest thing I've ever done in my entire life. No idea how these clips work, but apparently they're fairly common. I couldn't find anything on YouTube though. Oh, dude. Oh, there's lots of brake fluid in there still. Wow. Wow. All right. Let's go, dude. First time taking out a brake booster from a car. How about that, dude? 
this is a moment I've been waiting for for a while on this project already. Everything's out of the way. We got everything we need. We can see the carbon tub. You can see everything we need. So all I need to do is undo the last electrical connections from the subframe, undo <laughs> this bolt just completely snapped off of the steering rack to the subframe when it bent. And uh, this side, we need to unscrew it. it. It would not surprise me if this side was also on the verge of breaking. And so I might just accidentally have to just break this bolt out. But then at that point, we can lower the subframe out. We can take the wheels off, take the subframe out, take these frame rails off, and we'll have complete open working environment right here. And then I can get the last little pieces. I can swap the steering rack out, replace this radiator, and just kind of diagnose the last couple things. And then at that point, when I have all the part numbers and all the parts come in, it's literally just putting it all back on the front end. And then we have a complete front end again and hopefully a fully functioning car. So yeah, very, very excited right now. So uh, let's just start unscrewing stuff even further and get everything taken off that we need to. Let's do it. Tell it's a little tighter in there than it should be. Wow, we actually have a good bolt. How about that? First time I'm taking these wheels off. How about that? These things are massive. Oh, this is freaking huge. Thank you. That's nice. I could definitely tell from a visual inspection, the brakes are definitely getting low. It's probably only got like two millimeters. That's crazy. Previous owner, man, I'm telling you, ran this thing into the ground. Just 10,000 miles. I guarantee you, first owner who drove it like 52,000 miles, love this thing. Meticulous maintenance, everything. And then the second owner got it and freak, slap some ghetto rims on here. No oil changes, no brake pad replacements, just freaking send it and then hit a light pole, claim insurance. Idiot. Oh, let's freaking go. All right. Get the impact gun and finish that off. That's a long bolt right there. Sheesh. Yeah, there it is. There it is, dude. You guys have no idea how fast it's gonna fly apart once I get these four bolts hopefully out. Once the subframe's out, I can also get both frame rails out and nothing's attached to them. They can basically just come straight out. It's gonna go real quick once these are done. So let's get these four bolts out and then get to it. One subframe, everybody. Ah, oh, easy, easy money. Way too easy. It may seem kind of lame, but this is my first time undoing tie rods. <laughs> I just watched a video about how to like, they had a tool that he like, it like clamps and then you hit it with an impact gun. I'm just gonna give it the good old fashioned. Oh, that was way, way too easy. Oh, easy money, are you serious? Cash money in the bank. Are you kidding me? We just got the hardest damages removed. Insane. Look at this. How about that? Look at that thing. Golly, dude. Wow. I think we could probably straighten this out and reuse it. The time has officially come. Let's get these frame rails off of here. This one is already unscrewed, except for that one that was ha, touching the freaking subframe and couldn't come out before. This one needs to get all of them taken off, so let's just get to it. I cannot believe 
all the decisions I've made in my life up to this point has led me to me taking off a frame rail on a McLaren. All right, first frame rail I've ever taken off, boys. Wow. Oh, that's freaking crazy, dude. dude. Let's go, dude. How do we have 90% of the damage already removed off this thing? It's almost just to the point now where we're just putting on new parts and putting it back together into a fully functional rebuilt car. That's crazy. All right, so I just took the boot off of the steering column to see what the damage was in this joint here. Hard to see, I know, but the pin just like snapped out. Hopefully all I'll need is like a new pin to connect this joint, but to be determined. Okay, thank you. Oh, I know the coolant <laughs> still works. That's really funny. Maybe just roll with these old ones, man. I think you guys can agree with me when I say what an awesome project so far. I can't believe we already have the damaged parts removed and we're all the way down to the carbon fiber tub in the front end. You know what we have over Tavares, Matt Armstrong, and V-Tuned? My McLaren doesn't have a damaged carbon fiber tub. That's one thing that's a major concern with any McLaren build. It means you're more than likely going to have to strip the entire car down to replace it which all of those guys have had to do. It adds an insane amount of complexity, cost, and time to the project. So seeing that wasn't an issue here was a huge relief. That's why their builds have taken up to two years to complete and are definitely over budget. You could see them kind of get burnt out halfway through the build too. So hopefully that's not the fate of this project as well. I don't think it will be based on what we see now. We're a month in at this point with most of the damage removed already with a pretty solid game plan moving forward to finish this thing up. So far, it's been an awesome project and I've really enjoyed sharing it with you guys. All right, well, I think I'm definitely gonna need a nap after this, man. I'm exhausted. <laughs> this is gonna sound weird, but it really wasn't like that hard to do. It was just a lot of little stuff to figure out, you know, every step of the way. It's just a matter of putting in the hours and just getting each component off step by step. Uh, but anyway, you guys can see all of the damage stuff that we took off here. This was the majority of all the damage here. And you guys can see how effed the, <laughs> the steering rack is. Um, anyway, all the sketchy stuff that the flippers did, I have removed. <laughs> we have the new subframe here. Um, it was in fact the wrong one that they sent me, but it, I mean, it's in better condition than the other one was. I was hoping to get the battery tray that the, the actual listing photos had and the two sensors there, but I realized now I found the other sensor. So we have both the sensors. The TPMS sensor here is the one we needed. Like the TPMS module was actually like ripped off. So it's like half of a module here. I didn't know what this was. And looking into the subframe and everything, I realized it was the TPMS sensor. So this had snapped all the way off and left the connector in the little end here. Um, so we needed that. The only thing we don't have now for the subframe is the battery tray, but I'll probably need to use the other one anyway because the battery size probably is a little different than the actual McLaren OEM one. But man, I can't believe just looking at this thing. I can't believe that this thing is completely taken apart now. You guys can see the carbon tub all the way along there. I'm gonna say that we have all the damage removed, but something I haven't done yet in this video is taking these coolant lines off. Um, there's a little tunnel that runs underneath the car that just has a piece of sheet metal that you need to unscrew. There's probably like 10 little screws that will pop that down. And it's just a matter of when all the parts come in, I'm ordering the last stuff tonight. It's just a matter of putting it all back together and it's a fully rebuilt car. Um, crazy to think about. The hardest part always is assessing the damage, taking all the damaged stuff off, getting all the parts, 
then the easiest part is putting it all back on. And uh, obviously there's things to figure out here and there while you do that too. But anyway, that, so that's that, really exciting. Come on over here. I told you guys already that there's a ton of parts in. I'm still waiting on the body kit, but I did get the air ducts for the front. These will clip onto the frame rails like this, and then the auxiliary radiators here, then the wheels behind it, and this is the front bumper here. So the same seller that sold these um, are also selling the body kit. And apparently it's still on a boat somewhere coming across the, uh, the ocean to come to me. Um, but we should have that hopefully early to mid January. That's the most exciting piece of the puzzle, but it's also taking the longest to get here. So I'm gonna be really, ex really excited when I see the fenders and the front bumper and everything. That's gonna make this whole car feel like an actually really nice car. Um, unfortunate news, live and late braking, I just realized this is the wrong steering rack. It looks very similar, but it's the wrong steering rack. I am 100% sure that I did not order the wrong one. I feel like there's a couple people on eBay right now who are parting out the same like two McLarens or something. And so basically all the parts I'm getting is from the basically two McLarens, different companies selling the parts for each one. And it would not surprise me if they made a mistake on that one thing, the subframe, they would have made a mistake also shipping this out. So I need to figure out the steering racks, unfortunately. Um, it was the wrong part that they sent. And that was one of the main things I need to be able to throw the whole subframe and everything together. Um, anyway, we have a new hydraulic pump here. So that's cool. And then you guys can see behind me, we have a whole lot of parts already coming in. Um, pretty much everything we need besides, um, you know, the front bumper and the fenders and everything and all the parts I still have to order. But everything I knew that I needed are all right here. I even have some of the coolant lines and stuff that I knew that I could physically see were kinked. Um, I ordered those already, so they're in here somewhere. <laughs> we got fender liners. We have a new hood for it. You guys can also see we have, um, this is the one I took off of the car the skid plate on the back. I guess it's called a diffuser. This is repairable enough for me to just repair. I could have spent another $2,000 or something getting a, a new one. Honestly, is not even seen underneath the car. Basically, you only see it like this. Like if you're looking at it from the top, it's basically how you see it, yeah. <laughs> and this is all made of fiberglass too, so it'll be easy for me to to do the patches and then repaint it and everything and just keep the OEM one. I kind of like the look of it. The aftermarket ones I'm seeing are A, expensive and B, I really just don't like the look of them. So anyway, I told you guys we have a lot of parts in and we obviously do have quite a few parts in. Um, yeah, I know it's taking up a lot of space in here, but hopefully soon I'm going to be able to slap all these on there at some point. It's crazy to think that this big pile right here has taken up like a ton of space in the garage but within like a day or two days, all of this stuff will be on the car once it's all ready to get rebuilt. I can't believe I'm saying this, but that's wrapping it up on video number three. And these are long videos and lots of content in each one. And I'm physically doing all this content. I can't believe it's already the third episode of this build. Come to a wrap. I mean, the fourth one is now starting. <laughs> okay, I have something to say. Um, I have a mission for you guys first. If anybody can find me, the box that comes off of the radiator to like, if you guys know 12 C's or 650 S's or something, and you know what I'm talking about, like that little air duct that connects to the hood and has like a little air intake on it. I have no idea what that thing is called. I cannot find that part anywhere. I have the radiator, I'm gonna order that. It was already in my eBay cart and I actually got like a 10% discount offer last night for it. So I'm gonna pull the trigger since I know it's the right one now. But I can't find that freaking like air duct for the radiator, the heater core in the McLaren. So if anybody knows what that is and you can point me to the right part number or just a listing for it anywhere, I will send you either an air pump, a screwdriver set, or a bunch of stickers, or all three, or a Starbucks card. I might just throw it all. If you can find me that part, I'll just give you like a full on gift. Anyway, so I can't find that part anywhere. If anybody knows what that is, shoot me a message or email me, enginemotorcycles.gmail.com and tell me what that part is. So tonight I'm basically ordering all the rest of the parts. If there's any parts that I can't find um, that I know I need, 
I will throw them in a comment below. If you guys can find those parts, anybody who points me in the right directions to parts I can't find, I will send a care package to you. Just shoot me an email, enginemotorcycles at gmail.com. There's a comment below that I'm gonna post. Any parts I need that I don't know what they are, just help a brother out if you could. <laughs> There's still a lot to figure out on this project and it's fun for me to be able to kind of just go through everything like this, but at the same time, it can get a little bit frustrating and kind of not like daunting, but like it can get a little bit stressful you know, trying to find all the little tiny parts that I know that I'll need. I know I also need the trunk insert for this thing and I need the trunk plastic shroud. I can't find the part number for those anywhere. So if you guys could point me in the directions for those two, that would be great. That's pretty much it for video number three on this series. I hope you guys are still enjoying it. I know at this stage of the build, it, I'm trying to keep it interesting and very informative. And so, you know, on YouTube, you don't get a lot of people like actually showing you what they're doing and explaining and so I'm kind of being that guy you know in the future if somebody else is rebuilding a 650s I want to be the guy that can show them everything they need because <laughs> I've been picking at little pieces of information all over the web trying to figure stuff out so I want to just dump it all in one series for everybody and hopefully you guys are all enjoying it at home as well that's pretty much it episode number four coming soon I am going to get to work on those coolant lines next and then I'm just waiting for parts for the next few I don't know, a week or something until New Year's rolls around. It's December 27th or something today. Um, but until New Year's rolls around, nobody's really shipping stuff out anyway. Maybe I'll get to work on the interior, but I'm waiting for Sean at McMedics to also reflash the modules. And I think he might need some interior <laughs> functionality to reflash the modules. I have not figured that out yet. I'm hoping I could just slap a battery on here and plug it in and it and he can reflash it as it is. I have no idea, but I need the wheels on. We're gonna keep figuring stuff out. <laughs> Appreciate you guys. What a blessing it is to even just be working on something like this. Hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you guys had a great holiday and I hope you guys have an amazing year in 2024. I'm always rooting for you guys and I hope the best for you guys all the time. If you need anything, just shoot me an email, shoot me a DM. I'll catch you next time.